at human subjects. We received approval from the GMU Human Subjects Review Board. We recruited 15 healthy human subjects of all ages, genders, and ethnic backgrounds, and recorded two minutes of data per subject. We then compared the spike of the audible click, which the locations of their ways were detected. So here is a graph of a human subject's ECG in white. You can see the R waves are pretty distinct, and the line below, the green spikes, um, is the detection of each R wave. For testing, we used confusion matrix to determine the accuracy of our system. Here is another ECG form, um, where you can see 12 R waves. Eight were detected, and four were missed. Here's the confusion matrix. Uh, where 67% represents the eight that were detected, 33 uh, with four that were missed, zero on the bottom left indicates the number of false triggers. Um, fortunately, we didn't have any, and the bottom right corner indicates the number of um, correct non R waves, so we can just leave that blank. The results of our human subjects vary. Um, here's a bar graph showing all of our human subjects and the percent of R waves detected. So we had some that had very good performance, um, 100, upper 90s. We also had some in the lower 70s, even someone in the 60s. The overall accuracy of our system was 88%, and that's an average of all of the human subjects. I also wanted to point out that although our system may miss our waves, humans looking at the seven second display can still be able to tell the uh, heart rate because um, of the reoccurring number on the seven second display. Uh, so to improve the accuracy of our system, we could do several things. One is we could vary the threshold. Um, based on the initial tests that were run on just the four of us, uh, it, it was clear that when an R wave was detected, the Y value was significantly higher. So we just set the threshold based on the four of us. So we could re, uh, reconfigure that. We could also change the window size. The window size is uh, the period of time after where we don't allow an R wave to be detected after the initial trigger. We can also completely take out the threshold and apply adaptive thresholding. And as Dr. Sitar said, ECG signals for everyone, um, detecting them is not trivial, so um, <coughs> we can also apply adaptive thresholding. Um, here are some tests run with um, some different movements. Here's someone with really anxious legs. Uh, you can still see the R, R wave very clearly, and all of the peaks are detected. Here's fingers moving, which could be representative of EMG noise. Um, again, were detected. And lastly, heavy breathing, which were also detected. We're now going to show you a short clip of our project.